I made three mistakes, guys, but don't worry. I'm going to let you know what they are at the end of the video. Before the yurt arrived, I hired a professional construction crew to build the platform and the entry deck. I had already selected the perfect location for the yurt, so they measured 20 feet in diameter and they marked the center. They showed up at 8 a.m. and by noontime they were ready to install the quick tools. Installed 17 quick tube forms for building the footings. The tubes are made of cardboard covered in wax and are easy to cut to size. The footings must extend below the freeze line to prevent shifting during freeze thaw cycles, so be sure to consult your area's building codes for freeze line requirements in your area. It is important to use high strength concrete mix for deck and building footings. I measured the depths of the quick tube forms to ensure that they were below the freeze line. So they've mixed all the concrete. They're filling all the footings with the concrete and they're adding the footing brackets on top of each footing. And I'll be coming around and making sure that it's all leveled. It's very important to make sure that all the footings are leveled. And because the ground wasn't leveled, some of the footings are higher than others to make sure that it all ends up leveled. We waited three days for the cement to dry. It's very important that it's very dry. And then we got the lumber delivered just in time. You can see here that some of the footings are higher than others. And that's, as I mentioned before, because the ground was not leveled. And so the footing heights makes up for it. And this way, all the footings end up being leveled. So we got the lumber for the framing. It's pressure treated. Um, this is just for the out, the exterior and for the little porch and stairs. It has to be pressure treated. Um, but the inside, the wood that's gonna go in the inside of the yard is not gonna be pressure treated, no chemicals. It's gonna be beautiful red pine uh, flooring. The framing is next. Guys, don't forget to like this video, please, and subscribe. This is the first part of the framing, adding the beams and the perimeter blockings. And then we're going to add the plywood. Now I wanted some insulation. So, well, we have to make sure it's leveled, of course, always. And we added some insulation and then some more beams. And then finally, my favorite part, the floorboards. My red pine, ton and groove, ton and groove flooring being installed by Willie and Kyle. Check this out. I got all the power tools. It's so pretty, the flooring. It's got beautiful knots. I'm gonna find a natural, um, a natural stain just to bring up the grain and the knots of the wood. See? I made a mistake here. I'll tell you what it is at the end of the video. 
The diameter of the final platform had to be exactly 20 feet. I was so nervous about this and I kept reminding them that we needed it to be 20 feet and then we were going to add a drip edge. So they used their um, hand saw to cut through the plywood and the floorboards all around and they came pretty close but they got it right exactly 20 feet before adding the drip edge And finally, the cedar drip edge skirt was added. Now my beautiful platform is leveled. It's leveled. Now that the platform is finished, I'll let you know what my three mistakes were. Mistake number one, I should have added more insulation between the plywood and floorboards and still maintain one inch airspace from the underside of my flooring. Mistake number two, I should have added caulking between the drip edge and the floor level. This would have helped me with the much needed insulation. Mistake number three, I should have waited until the yurt arrived before building the platform because it rained a lot and the cover I used was not 100% waterproof.